morning, everybody. Welcome to the second day of IT, IT Pro Dev Connections. And today we will talk about how to properly set up um, GitHub Actions to actually distribute uh, files through the use of Docker Container and GitHub Actions uh, to your cloud uh, services or any other um, maybe uh, storage you have. Um, while being as secure as possible. Uh, before we start the presentation, let me also inform you that there is currently a 17 to 20 second delay between uh, what I say and what you hear. So if you ask any questions, they will arrive about 20 seconds late to me. Um, so just be patient when you ask something. I will try to answer everything. Um, so let us begin. Uh, the sponsors. Uh, okay, so distributing files to the cloud with GitHub Actions. It's a uh, very small automation, very efficient automation. And I hope it can give you, it, it's not a very uh, complicated solution, um, but I hope it will give you uh, a good and small start to begin and try to do uh, something interesting with that. Um, it's like, it's like let's say a small introduction to CI/CD. Uh, I made this presentation originally. Uh, some of the um, with my friend Konstantin Solomonidis, I'm Achilles Fantis, and we made some part of the presentation together. Uh, but he couldn't join me today to present with me. Most of the parts made by me, but he helped me with some initials. He is kind of my mentor. All right, so as IBM said, uh, machines should work and humans should think. Um, I have posted the short below, it's actually a video, um, an advertisement that IBM made in 1967, which uh, was actually a very smart idea that uh, we should think more and work less. Uh, but there's also the, the issue that uh, you can actually fall into a cavity, but you can keep automating and not be efficient. This is an excellent comic from Hacked. Uh, also, I have put another comic from Hacked. Uh, fun fact, while I searched it on the, um, on the, uh, when I searched it for the comics to uh, post them online, I, I found out that they were free, uh, free to use. They have no, uh, no rights to use, so you can use them uh, as you wish. Um, so don't just automate for the sake of automation, uh, because sometimes you can spend so much time automating that it's not worth spending your time and you won't gain anything. But you will waste so much time trying to automate things that it won't be worth. So let's begin and see how we would work uh, up until now. Uh, you are making a change to your CV, let's say, because the use case that I'm going to showcase today is uh, when you have your CV and you make a change and you want that change to actually propagate to every uh, cloud solution you have. And for example, you want to apply to Google or Microsoft or some other, or some other company and you need to have your CV up and ready for in Dropbox, in OneDrive, in Google Drive, in some other uh, maybe you have some online storage or some local storage or anything you want and you need to have it um, shared everywhere so you make it into ECB, you save it to the file you want, to the folder you want and then you remember you have to remember to put it up on Dropbox, then you have to remember to put it up on OneDrive uh, then you, you have to ask yourself, have I, have I forgot any cloud provider? Uh, maybe I have forgotten to put it up on Google Drive, and then at the end you found out that you have done a typo, so you have to start all over again, which is uh, not ideal. You have to start all over again and do it again from the start, and have to remember again every every single change you made, which is uh, kind of frustration. I believe that most of you have actually I lived through that. So. I actually sat down and contrary to what I said to the last slide about the automation, uh, I thought, okay, maybe it's a good idea to automate, and I started automating. 
Okay, so what's it? What's the general idea? What's what? What's how? How would design the system? What's the after? So what's our end goal? Um, the automation starts from when you save the fold the the file to the folder. You save it to your local. You create your CV. You update your CV. You make any change you may want. You save it to your local folder, and then you push it. After that, on the GitHub. Um, there are some action and workflows that run. There is a, actually a workflow that runs and is executing actions. And it's using a VM, which on top of that VM it sets up a Docker container. And then by the use of Arclow, it pushes uh, the folder to OneDrive. For this showcase, I'm actually using a very simple automation. I mean, I'm not pushing to many multiple uh, Google providers at once, but it's very easy to change it and put as many as you want. But uh, this is what, uh, what I have designed. If you have any questions as well, you may uh, ask me and tell me, okay, can you please uh, um, elaborate more on something? So I will try to answer everything as we're moving on. So what is Git? Because I, this is a beginner's course, most of you may know Git, but I'm trying to make it as simple as possible and uh, as easy to get into as possible. So Git is the technology that every other uh, Git clone is bootstrapped on. It's the basis for everything else. It was created actually by Linus, Linus Tovalds, the very known Linus, uh, because he he, he thought that every other uh, versioning system was inadequate and he hated everything about them and most, most of all uh, perforce and he actually made a tech talk in Google when he created uh, Git about how uh, inadequate perforce was to actually create um, big how to create big, um, big projects um, the files are distributed among the servers, among the users. Uh, whatever you develop, you push it. They are developed locally, and you don't have like a centralized authority, but you have more like uh, some checksums. And when you pull and you push, uh, it actually you have actually centralized authority. But the difference is that um, for perforce, every change you you made, uh, you always had to push it and make it public. Um, while on Git, it provides you the opportunity to actually uh, have it locally and then share it with your colleagues locally and then move it up to the central for the final project and the final post. And it's worth reading more about Git on Wikipedia because it's a very interesting story and it's very interesting how it was developed. It's also very lightweight, which is why it's uh, used by many people. Uh, keep in mind that all the other solutions, even though um, Tom Linus said, okay, this, this, is, uh, this is horrible, uh, they have some pros as well, for example, uh, Perforce and the Centralized. They are easier to actually um, create multiple versions of the same software to, uh, for each customer, depending on the needs. It's easier to do some uh, versioning on that perspective. Uh, what is GitHub now? Uh, it's a flavor of Git. They are called flavors, they are called deactivations, depending on uh, who you talk. I call them flavors. Uh, so, it's built upon uh, Git. It provides some extra small functionality, not not small functionality, it provides some extra functionality, but the, the sa it's the same with, with uh, Git. The base is the same with Git. Uh, that's why there is always like GitHub, GitLab, um, Git something, git something, something, git plus plus, let's say. Um, they, they, they have the, ba the same basic commands. Git is bu built to be interactive, and every time you execute a command, you always have your feedback. You don't have to create many automation with git commands. Git does whatever you want it to do. And the basic functionality is the same, uh, but the difference is that GitHub provides the servers because when you create a git server when you have a git server uh everything is is either hosted locally 
or you create your own uh, uh, repository in a server you rent. But the idea behind GitHub is that everything uh, is hosted online on a server provided by Microsoft itself. Um, which is actually very good for us because you don't have to pay for the storage, they give you unlimited storage, they also give you um, private repositories, which is quite good. Okay. So GitHub Actions and Workflows is actually the introduction to CICD. The idea behind it is that you can automate tests. It's fast to test. You have some error reporting. And why is that? When you create new versions of your software, you need it to actually be tested before it can push and deliver to the customer. Um, you can create some general tests, as many as you want. And when you run a push to whatever uh, branch you want, to the main branch, to an off branch, it's up to you. You have, you can code it. Uh, you can actually uh, push the actions. You, the, the, when you push, the some actions will run. It will actually run a workflow. It's called GitHub Actions, and it will actually run the tests. And when the tests finish, it will actually give you the results. It will send you the results to the GitHub. If they fail, it will also send you a mail. If the basic uh, action fails, the GitHub action, not, not the test themselves, it will send you a mail, otherwise you can see it You can see it on a log file or on GitHub. We will see that later. I will actually showcase to you through GitHub, through my GitHub. And by also passing sanity test, you avoid insanity, which is actually the most important thing. And you have some ease of mind that everything worked properly, we didn't have any huge crucial bugs, you didn't have anything that crashed uh, when you started. So it's quite good to use GitHub Actions and Workflows. And let's see, uh, what are Docker containers? It's actually, let's say, a version of a virtual machine. It's much easier to deploy since you can have even multiple Dockers running on top of each other. It leaves nothing when the process is finished. When you, you can define it to leave nothing when the process is finished. Uh, what do I mean by that? When you set up a VM and you want to run, let's say, uh, a process, you actually create the VM, you run the process, and then the VM keeps running. You have to, you have to set it down manually or you have to create... Um, you have to create uh, some script to automate it and uh, when it finishes uh, to automatically shut down but you, when you set up the VM and when you create the VM you allocate some resources de facto it, it tells you how many resources you need to allocate you need to allocate these resources they have created some scalable you can actually on the cloud have some scalability on the VMs but it's uh, not always really that uh, efficient for what we want to do with some smaller operations, some small and fast operations. Uh, well, on Docker container, you you don't have to specify the size. It asks the size because it has uh, the Kubernetes below, which will automatically uh, allocate the resources that it needs. It will give it the RAM and it will give you the processing power. Uh, but it's not like uh, the Docker containers, the containers have <laughs> eclipsed uh, VMs because it has some different uh, functionality and they have some different ways to work. For example, uh, Docker, uh, the, the VMs actually uh, can run and you can actually allocate a whole uh, process to them. Some threads, not, not just some threads, you can allocate to them um, two gigabytes of they have direct access to them, which is kind of different on the Docker <laughs> container. Okay, so what is our clone? Our clone handles connectivity between our uh, local machine and the cloud provider that we want. It actually stores locally uh, all of two token between our PC and our cloud provider. So you may be familiar with O2, you may need it. 
Uh, you can read you can read further about OAuth two below. I have put some link. Also, uh, I will actually post them post the slides uh, on the chat so you can have the you can have the link. I have also put them on my GitHub repository. Um, so it gives you some proper navigation through the file system of whatever cloud provider you want. It makes sure that your your files are live safely, very safe actually. Because it actually checks out whatever has arrived if it has arrived properly, and you can have you can have the connectivity. It gives you proper connectivity, and it stores them locally. You can read further about our clone again on the links. If you have, I, if I have more time at the end, I will reiterate and explain more things uh, because I believe this, this is kind of a good, uh, let's say. Area to Dublin, and you may find it interesting, but yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay, so the pros before we go further and we start looking at code and stuff, uh, let's find out, let's talk about the pros and cons. Uh, the pros is the ease of use, right? After you set it up, you it just runs and you can use it as many times as you want, you don't have to worry about everything. It cleans up itself after execution due to the nature that uh, it have actors work. It cleans up itself, it cleans everything. Uh, you don't have to worry about leaving anything behind. Uh, it's a good mindset. It creates a good mindset in yourself that you can automate a lot of stuff. You actually learn and you keep it a good practice because it is a good practice to automate and create constant automation to make your life easier. Not to make your life easier, but to actually have the good mindset for testing and for how to use CICD procedures. It's an also a very easy example to get into. Uh, the cons, uh, it's mainly how much do you trust GitHub because we're going to place our R configuration file, the, the, the configuration file from our clone on GitHub. We're going to store it, which is, you have to trust GitHub that it won't uh, give it other, uh, some other place or it won't get hacked. Uh, but also, you can set the Docker container locally. I just did it with uh, GitHub just to keep tabs, as well, just to learn as well how to use GitHub Actions. And you need to actually make, uh, keep in mind that you have to uh, see which versions work. For example, with each new version of uh, our clone container, which is actually a very late addition. I think they added it on August. Um, you actually need to track which version it is and if it works on every update. But they don't make very frequent updates on, on the container file itself. Okay, so we the end of the slides. Let me start with the code. Okay, so my current, my current um, so you can see how it is. Okay, here it is. I'm actually using, uh, you may find it strange, but I'm using VS Code to actually develop, and I'm also using Ubuntu. On Windows, which is, I don't know, some may want me, some of you may want me a mistake, but, uh, Here we are, and it's right here we are. So, as you can see, here is my CV. Here is the Docker file that I'm using. Here is the action yum, and within here is the 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 dot yum that I'm using to update. I have also, if I have actually, I will execute it. But let me show it to you, um, right here. This is the GitHub repository that I have created. You can clone it and you can use it, which is bare bone. It doesn't have my configuration, obviously, uh, which would be bad because you would, you would have access. So here is the action that uh, you define when, let me show you how it works. All right, so this is, 
the CV updated. This is a private project. Within this, you can see even my configuration file .conf. I'm not going to open it because it has some. It has the OAuth two token. So if you go here to actions, you can see that I have made many, many, many tries to actually make it work. So if you open this, you can see that the job has passed and how it works. When you define an action right here, you tell it uh, through this file that every time I make a push on a push, I run this job, hello world job, uh, by using Ubuntu latest, it's a job to update the CV, uh, it uses the checkout function to actually, because it needs to check out the code, the code every time, and it uses the action that it finds on the root directory because every time that you run um, a GitHub action, it it runs on the it set up the the file system is same as the GitHub. It's a set file system, so you initially have a, a self a, uh, the same file system. It looks at the same file that you have at your local repository. That means that you can tell it to find the first action that it will find on the root folder. So it finds the first action the action on the root folder and it tries to execute it. Uh, it happens as a delegate on the push. Now, uh, which is kind of, uh, let's say, an irony that we are using a, a, an action to set up a VM on the server of GitHub and then on top of that, uh, you set, um, on top of that, you set a Docker container. It is actually a very, a very big level inception. I have, I have been asked. Wait, let me share it to you. Yeah, of course, I can give you. No, right here. Also, thank you, uh, Georgios, for telling me that it works. And just for the here it is. This is the GitHub link. I have also put a link for the slides. I will add more things to read me some more reading material for, for what I've read. Uh, in case uh, you want to read more, also the action has failed, obviously, because it can't find the um, configuration file. Let me show you what happens. Oh no, no! Let us finish first with this. Okay, so you run it like that. Uh, also, this is named as "Hello on Drive." These are the tags that you can see when the run finishes. What has failed? Now onto the action. Uh, it, as I told you, it searches on the root folder to find which action to run. It finds the action.yaml to run. And this action is it's called time to push, description is push, of course, because we're going to push. And by using uh, Docker, uh, the image is Docker file. The Docker file is, I have created, you have to create it locally. And how does the Docker file work? From our clone, our clone latest. Our clone actually provides a very good uh, container image, Docker image, to actually be able to run um, our clone with minimal resources. And you have the working the working directory. I have set it like that uh, because I want to find when when you set it up. Uh, it's actually a fully operational. A Linux system. I don't remember the exact operating system that Arclone is based on. I can find it. Let me let's let's find out. Actually, Arclone. I have put this link about Arclone right here. So no, we need Arclone. Okay. Container. So you, it actually is based on a, I don't remember the exact version, let's find it, a very light operating system. Let me see if I can find it right here. Because I've done, I've done a lot of reading to actually uh, bring this out to you. It took me a lot of, like a, a lot of reading to actually find everything that needed to and distill it to that level. Mm, no, I can't find it. Right. Anyways. Um, So you you copy the configuration file and you copy it to your to your local uh, directory. And after you copy it to your local 
after we also copy um, your um, your CV again to your local directory. The idea behind that is that those commands uh, they run they don't run on the on the Docker on the container that you are currently using. They're running from Kubernetes. He actually because it has a shared file system, the Kubernetes with the Docker container. Maybe should I should I actually draw it for you on um, on a notepad? Maybe it would make it easier. How many levels of I'm sorry for the brightness, all right? Um, so we actually have GitHub right here, all right? This is our lower level. So GitHub is right here. On top of GitHub, we set an Ubuntu VM. On top of that, we have Kubernetes. And on top of that, we have our clone. So, uh, with GitHub, this is our GitHub repository, and this has a fail, uh, shared file system with a Ubuntu VM. It actually shares the same files, so those two communicate. Then Kubernetes can access the file from Ubuntu VM. And then uh, Kubernetes sends the files up here. Uh, so how does it work? Uh, since GitHub loads everything, when you initialize this, it, it loads our PDF and our config file, right? Uh, then Ubuntu VM, when you run Kubernetes on it, since this is set and this is passed onto the Ubuntu VM, then this Ubuntu VM, uh, which is Kubernetes on top, it actually draws everything and passes them onto uh, the, the file system right here. And then it passes them onto our clone. I don't know if that helped you make it any clearer. Right. So, so after you do that, you actually have to execute a command. The command is in one liner. It's very easy after that point. Uh, it's the sync command for our clone. Uh, use the config to actually tell it which configuration to load. Load the, the Arclo config. Uh, you tell it which file to update, and then you give it to the remote. Because uh, our clone has actually stored everything about uh, drives, it, it, you can actually tag them between themselves. So let's see it in action, right? Let, let's let's start building it from the scratch together. First, I will show you how. Um, I have actually made everything work. So let's see. Products. I'm sorry to use command line, but right. So in here, as you can see, I have my files, my file system, and. This is the clone configuration, and we can close. We can even call the um, our clone config. Wait, I think it's I'm sorry. Give me a moment to find out the commands. I have actually started. Right here. Right, CV updater. Because no, I don't have some. Mm. Anyways, I'm sorry about that. I thought I had stored the commands because I don't remember them all by heart. Uh, but you can actually, uh, every time you need to, you can change the configuration. Let's find it. Configure a clone. Right, Why do I have some issues then? Clone. Need it from. No. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. My fault, my fault. Completely my fault. Uh, 
Right, here we are. See the clone. So this is it. Uh, clone config. Okay. In later that you can see the existing remotes with in. This is the one drive update. Uh, as you can see, it's the same tag name as here. And you can actually set new. So let's say if you want to set up a new remote. No, I don't want to do that. So let's execute it again. Uh, a new remote, right? So let's say we want to set Google Drive. And then you have so many options to choose from. As you can see, it has many default options and you can set many more. Whatever, whatever cloud provider you have and you want it to uh, work, if it supports OAuth 2, then you can set it up. So right now we're going to use Google Drive. So this is 13. Okay. So you have to set up the client ID right now because it's going to you to set up the OAuth and I don't remember if it actually have the um, password encrypted, type it on screen. I'm going to leave it to you, but the um, process is very streamlined. So let's go behind to that. Um, actually, let me, let me just... into my CV. Right. It's logged in right now. I'm using Overleaf. And the main reason that I did it with um, GitHub Actions and Workflows is because every time I had to make a change, I had to actually uh, change it and put it uh, to every, every single uh, cloud provider I have. Also, keep in mind that the token is done after 90 days. Let me change the zoom level. So let's say that I have made a typo, right? So here, let's say this is too small. Actually save it. Compile. Okay, so then I download my PDF. Let's also check. Uh, so this is my CV, my OneDrive. I'm going to take this and delete it. As you can see, my file is empty. I have now my CV. Since I didn't make any changes and I need to make forceful changes, so this is the CV that I downloaded. Rename. I'm going to copy it and move on to my. We had the repos, my CV updater, and I'm going to delete this. Get commit. Delete my CV. Then I'm going to git push. Okay. Take some time to upload. Let's see how it did. All right, so this will be updated. Let's see if the job run. Uh, you can see that the, a job is queued. It takes around 30 seconds to finish. Refreshing the page. As you can see it running right here. And if something fails, you will see it below. As you can see, I'm very confident as well because I didn't run it yesterday to see if it, everything works or it, if it has updated. But I've checked the log files that nothing, nothing has updated in, from our clone's perspective. Oh, so it finished. Uh, 33 seconds ago, 29 seconds of execution. Let's see. I dropped up the TV. Set up job, check out, hello, reduction, everything worked. All right. Let's see. Did it upload it? Oh, yes. Here it is. Let, do you want me to create one more change? Let's say I change uh, something. Uh, yeah, let's, let's just do it for the sake of doing it. Let's say I change my name to... Patroclus, if I'm this, right? We compile again. 
So now, come on. Oh yeah, I changed the footer. All right, the footer is rather close from this. Uh, let me download it. Okay. So in folder, um, let's do name this. Let us delete this. Then we're gonna get git commit. We need to commit it. Changing my legal name. And then we will git push. Oh, I didn't read it, but uh, since it does a sync, it automatically uh, change the file. If I remember properly, it will. So let's go back to Accents and see when it's finished. Changing my legal name. In progress. Okay. Let's refresh my drive. And it changes, but reclusive on this. So as you can see, it works very fast, efficiently, and you can make any update that you want uh, very fast. How did I develop it to this level? It's not, I mean, a very high level anyways, but you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, actually, the, 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 the good default process to actually develop it, if you want to create something your own, if you are new to this, because I believe that this is um, for most new people good. Yeah, of course. Why not? It updates like five times per day. Okay, so until it runs, let me explain. The, the idea behind it is when you, you try to develop something that and make it work I actually first built the, the docker the container after I built the container I actually first work with her clone so let's let's, let's. the steps go as follows first uh, familiarize with yourself with her clone and create your configuration file just as sold. If it you, when, it, when it creates the configuration file, you can actually uh, let me show you the configuration file. All right. Um, so you go right here, and then you go to projects, Arclo. So it's stored uh, plainly right here. I actually there is actually a command to extract it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if you use this, you can actually see uh, which, let me, let's use it. Oh no, I closed the command line. And let's, let's, again, command prompt, right, directory, cd, project, no. Okay, cd, clone. Okay, uh, low, uh, config, file. And you can see what it's stored, all right? So then you can copy it manually. It's, uh, it has the oath, uh, let's say plainly. So if someone has access to your computer, it has access to this as well, but I think that will be the rest of your worries. And, all right. After you familiarize yourself uh, they are clone and you create your configuration file then you cop you can copy it then I worked on the docker container this is the next thing that you need to familiarize yourself I actually did a lot of tests to actually make it work and let me write it with more readable characters and then I familiarize myself with actions 
so this was my working process. Uh, if you want to do it, this is the good way to actually approach it. So if you have any questions, because I have finished what I wanted to say, uh, we have like five minutes, so you can answer any questions. While I'm also, oh my God, it's taking so much time to load. Okay, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to uh, keep explaining things that I think might be useful. Uh, so right here, um, when you clone the repository that I have created, let me show the repository. So this dog, Bruce, she's a cute little one. She's actually beside me currently. So IT product code. So when you clone this, keep in mind you. Uh, I created all of this using Windows, and when you you make this, all the all the things that you need to do is actually place within this story your uh, your um, how it's called uh, the kind of the your CV, and then the dot com file from what you have created, and then after that. Uh, let's see the action, not the actions yet, I'm sorry. Uh, the Docker file, you need to change within this uh, what it needs to copy and the tag right here. So those are the only thing, the two things that you need to change. You actually need to include within the repo um, your CV, your configuration file, and then you need to actually um, change the file names. So those were all the things. Now let's see what else I can say. If you can see right here, the R clone has many, 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 many possibilities uh, by de facto, which is kind of amazing because you can actually connect to so many things. Uh, for each and every one of them, it has instructions, so you can see uh, how it works, and it will. Those instructions will drive you through the setup process. And then it will show you how to actually uh, set up everything that you need to. And you can navigate the whole file system. If you, if you have time to run commands and test them locally, then you can actually copy them, the Docker file, and then put everything and navigate the whole uh, file system that you have. Um, okay, so that was everything that I had to show you. Let me uh, give you anything, any of my ways to contact me. So, suppose I have this presentation um, on my GitHub, on the repository that I said with you. Uh, you can actually use these, these, uh, these links to contact me. And you can send me an email, you can find Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever, and you can feel free to contact me with whatever information. I need and I'm free anything you may want any questions it doesn't seem like it but if you have any more questions or if you find any trouble any any trouble feel free to contact me thank you very much